Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Perry, I'm a boat builder and a sailor. And uh, I have some exciting news here. I managed to pick up 22 pound Rockna Anchor for 10 kilograms. Um, I did a video on anchors and I talked about how I really wanted a spade type anchor. I think they're really good. And uh, I set up a alert on Craigslist for it to send me an email when um, one became available and someone posted one and right away I emailed him, first person, and uh, we met that day and I picked it up um, for the negotiated good price. Um, so you may be looking at this little 10 foot nesting dinghy behind, behind me I built and wondering why do I need a 22 pound spade anchor? Well, uh, the reason is I have some exciting news. Uh, I'm gonna be building a 14 foot mini cruiser right here in my workshop. The boat I wanna build is called a 1010-425, spelled T-E-N-T-E-N-425. -E -E um, it's 4.25 meters by 1.8 meter beam, or 14 feet by six feet. Um, I want to ca prioritize the cabin, so the um, cockpit may even be a bit shorter than what's in the plan, uh, so that I can fit more stores and water in there and uh, more comfortably sleep. Uh, for the construction, I want to follow like uh, Mr. Sven Jurvin, who I mentioned in the last video, does, which is a uh, build it of a one to one and a half inch divinacell, which is a um, rigid foam core. It's a closed cell foam, so the advantages are you, um, you get really great insulation. It adds a lot of flotation. Uh, it won't rot like plywood eventually will. So with the rear beam in the design and the curved deck, it's self-writing in all conditions, which is what I want. I don't want any situation where I'm stuck upside down. I want this to be very ocean capable. I plan to use a trim tab self-steering. You don't see trim tab self-steering much on modern cruisers, but there are some. And uh, the advantages to me are just the pure simplicity of it. And um, Bernard Moitessier said it best in the long way. He said, um, in 10 months at sea, I, ste I steered for an hour before the island of Trinidad, about the same at the entrances to Hobart and Cape Town. Finally, I steered to take the Papit Pass and anchor. So sailing all the way around the world, there's only a few hours there where he said he actually had to take the tiller. The, his uh, trim tab wind vane did an excellent job and uh, I'm sure it will for me too. I have drawn a lot of mock-ups on the design. This is my most recent version. I was inspired by the boat Baluchon, built by Jan Cunet. He has sailed this 14-foot boat over 18,000 nautical miles to date, as he is currently sailing his solo circumnavigation. However, with Baluchon's 4-foot beam, I decided to choose a design with a wider 6-foot beam so that it would be possible to sleep two people and provide more cargo space. My mock-up features a round hatch I plan to build here in my workshop to be waterproof through a 360 degree rollover and leak-proof from rainfall or breaking waves. I've never understood why sailboats still use the horizontal sliding main companionway hatch with the wood slats you slide down vertically into place. If you read enough sailing books, you'll notice a common occurrence is a waterfall of water coming into the cabin through these hatches during a capsize, rollover, or when water breaks on deck. I've added an oval doghouse under the main hatch with non-opening portholes, which allow a 360 degree field of view. From an interior folding seat, I will be able to steer and adjust sails in the worst of weather while staying warm and dry. A whip staff will attach with control lines to an internal tiller system. The deck curves down to the mast, where the deck becomes more level until we get to the bow. The mast will be an unstayed carbon fiber mast. By using two control lines, the mast spins in place to allow the mainsail to furl around it. 
I also plan to have a retractable bowsprit that slides along the deck to support a small headsail. Holes and hatches are minimized to eliminate water entering the cabin as much as possible. There will be ventilation cowls located fore and aft with a special design that will prevent water from entering even through a rollover. The idea is to have this boat be like a tightly sealed oil drum. Well sealed, a craft like that will endure any storm as long as she's well off from any rocky shore. The boat features a dagger board to allow for trailering, beaching, and navigating shallow passages. So let's get this garage cleared out and uh, ready to build a boat. Laser measure. Thermometer. And this is a laser level. Let's check it out. Make sure we got a level boat. Very cool. Heat gun to help bend the divin cell panels. And the wall compact drill. Now, this is going to replace the drill I have, which is probably. 20 years old, my mother gave it to me. Now we got a battery pack, cordless drill. Very nice. This will be much easier to put drill bits in and out. All right, let's check out these two new, new toys. We got the laser measure. We got 94 inches to the wall there. Turn that off. And then the laser level. Very cool. That's going to come in handy. All right, well, now that we have a good workspace for building a boat, uh, all that remains is to get some supplies uh, to begin building a jig that'll hold the frames while we begin to build a boat around it. Some other supplies like the divinacell and plywood, and then we'll get going. Um, if you've watched this far, please do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the little notification bell so that you can know when I post another video. If you'd like to contribute to the project, there's some links down in the description for that. And uh, just thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Mr. Bordell, let's make all preparations for getting on the way. Thank 
guy sure likes to carry things. Hey, uh, what's your name, buddy? Oh, man. How do we get back to your station? I'll have you shot from a mutineer. Well, shoot something. <laughs> Oh,